Hey folks, uh, it's been a while, but I wanted to make a quick video talking about the league announcement since it just happened today. Um, I'm not going to watch the video again. I'll put a link to the video uh, in the description, I guess. But I just wanted to give some quick thoughts about the league and sort of how it pertains to my plans for league starting and in particular my two totem builds um, that I have guides for here on the channel. Uh, so if you haven't watched this yet, like I said, I'll link it in the description, but the general gist of it is that they're basically implementing a tower defense mode as a league mechanic. So just like how you run across monoliths or whatever, now you're going to run across this nun chick who will be standing near one of these weird nodes. And you click on her and it activates the node and then portals will open that are connected from these little trails. And monsters will come out of them, and they'll come to try to destroy this, you know, machine that she's hooked up. Um, and you can see here from one of their little images, uh, you know, you've got build points, and you can have her build towers on these particular nodes. And they kind of show you here that the monsters that come out of specific portals have specific weaknesses, right? Obviously, they're going to want to make the monsters that come out of here really, really hard, right? Because A, they're going to just follow one particular path, probably slower than a normal monster. And two, they're going to want to force you to actually build these towers, right? They don't want you to just like start the thing and then smash all the monsters by yourself and not even interact with the tower thing, right? So I'm a little bit concerned about how this works exactly in the sense that you can see here that it seems like it's mostly elemental weaknesses. And for, you know, both of my totem builds, and a lot of builds in this game, deal primarily one damage type you know frost or fire or uh, lightning or whatever and what i'm concerned about is whether like say you know this is a fire weakness portal so the enemies that are coming out of it are weak to fire so you'd be wanting to build a fire tower presumably but does that also mean that if they are not weak to frost can they not be chilled right because if they can't be chilled or frozen that has a lot of bad knock-on effects for, for say, freezing pulse totems who wants to chill things, not just to slow them down and shatter them, but to uh, get the bonuses from things like hypothermia and bone chill. So I'm, I'm curious how this is going to work. I'm hoping that you can still chill and freeze monsters. Um, maybe you can't freeze these things, period, which would be okay, as long as I can chill them. Um, if they really can't be chilled, if they're not weak to frost, then I'm not sure how this is going to work. I can't imagine that they would really do that, though. I mean, like, you know, what would that mean for... If they are weak to frost, then, like, what, a fire build couldn't fight them or couldn't ignite them or something? Like, uh, we'll have to see how this works, basically. Um, but assuming that things can get chilled, and maybe even frozen, which would be amazing, um, it feels like the kind of mechanic that freezing pulse totems would just absolutely fucking dominate, right? Like... We've already been playing tower defense mode in PoE the whole time. Like, that's what totems are. And so, being able to drop incredibly powerful totems and have them do work while you have the time then to go run around and mess with these tower things, that is going to be so different compared to, you know, take a melee build, you know, that does just player based area. They're going to have to split their time between helping kill monsters and then going to do to tower stuff. Whereas totem builds aren't going to have to do that at all. We already just set totems up and then curse things and run around. So this, this mechanic, just like how the domain was perfect for headhunter cycloners, this looks like uh, the holy grail for totem builds. So if you already like playing totems or you just like are using my guides currently in Legion, uh, I'm pretty certain that Freezing Pulse Totem is on the menu for this league. I can't imagine totems just not being ideal for this kind of gameplay even traps and mines are not as well suited as totems for this specifically because the whole juggling mechanic of tower defense is splitting your time between doing something and then setting up towers uh, we have all, all the time in the world right we only need a second to drop totems and maybe curse things so yeah, I just I haven't seen a league mechanic at first glance be so ideal for totems. I'm very excited about this league. And it just looks kind of neat, right? Like uh just this idea of of having something so a new a new element of gameplay 
Um, that's one of the things I think Legion really lacked. It was a very like straightforward, no nonsense. Like here's just some new monsters to smash in your maps. Whereas this um, is going to make people really change their gameplay. I mean, totems aren't going to be as affected, but I think a lot of builds are going to have to really think about how to best build and and uh, think about their second second gameplay to juggle these two things. Whereas <laughs> totems are just going to have have a field day with this stuff. And this here seems like the sort of end game aspect of this, where I would I would assume from these events on normal maps you can get blighted map drops and as you can see here what it basically means is that all the monsters in the map are gone and it's been replaced with like giant lanes of tower defense which again it just sounds like a dream come true for a totem build like we get to do all the setup and we get to have all this free time to mess with the towers i feel like uh, freezing pulse is just is going to dominate this league um and this, the anointment mechanic seems to be your sort of primary reward system, right? You can see uh, up here, they still have chests, like completing portals. These three portals seem to be destroyed, and they leave behind, just like Legion, right? They have these icons to show you what kind of rewards you get. And it kind of looks like maybe like Legion, you'll get a, a pretty wide variety of rewards outside the league, right? Um... So there's still going to be regular reward drops, but this anointment system is the new unique one to the to the Blight League. And it seems pretty insane. Basically, you can use these oil drops, and I think somewhere, maybe in Ziggy D's video, he mentioned that there were like 12 or 13 different oils. And you basically put three of them in this device, and you can either anoint amulets or rings by default. And if you anoint amulets, as you can see here on the examples, like... They basically give you a free notable on the passive skill tree, which, I mean, for any, I love this idea because for any build in the game, no matter what ascendancy or even build type, there's so much value in being able to get a free notable because not only could you just look at it from the perspective of like, okay, I really only want like, you know, a notable here. I could just save a few points. You could also have the opportunity to get some notables you just could never get before, right? Like uh, Soul of Steel would be a really nice notable for for either of my totem builds. It's a very defensive node. I would say about on par with Constitution, one of the most I think powerful defensive nodes in the game as far as notables. But I would I think I would rather have this one, particularly my Freezing Pulse build, because the value of adding life is a little bit skewed when we're working on a 40% mind over matter, right? Well, obviously not getting any mana out of constitution. So we're just sort of skewing the ratio and making it a little bit harder to catch our mana up. Whereas with this, I can get a pretty similar defensive return without needing to balance my, I'm essentially making my own life and mana more efficient. Um, plus one max res at the default level amounts to about 4% less elemental damage taken. And then you get 5% less physical damage taken, which is our big weakness. And then more armor and then increased armor so this is this is a really really good defensive node and i just never you could never take this before right it's so far away but now with the anointment system you could just snap one of these one of these notables up anywhere on the tree you know once you get the right combination of oils and there's a few like if you didn't want to use it for defense and off the top of my head you could take something like heart of ice um i'm thinking about freezing pulse but i'm looking at Holy flame totems. But yeah, like this is, you know, this is a huge damage node for us. We can never get to it because it's so far away. Like this is a seven point line. These are okay efficiency, but these two int nodes just absolutely, it's actually three. I forgot. It's three int nodes, which just destroys the value of this. So this was just never an option before. But if you look at just getting it right away, it's a 6.5% damage increase, which is awesome. The same thing for like Throat Seeker, 6.7. This was a little bit more reasonable, and I actually thought about picking this up in my level 100 character. But there's a 30% crit molt here. There's another 30% crit molt. So there's two options to get a 30% crit molt bonus on the tree. One of them you just could never get to before. So if you just wanted raw damage, there's a ton of good options. Spiritual Aid would be another good choice. Um, if you wanted to build into minion damage and just uh, without any investment, this is a six or five point jump for us. But then you'd just be able to pick it up for free 
Um, and you could make this pretty valuable. Even by itself, it's 3.1% damage, which is a pretty solid notable, assuming I was pathing towards it. Um, but being able to build minion gear and just snap this up, um, you could probably make this pretty comparable to something like Heart of Ice or Throat Seeker. So there's a lot of things you can do, and that's not going to be unique to my build. It'd be unique to any, you know, any build could get a ton of value out of a free notable. Um, anointing your rings is not that powerful, at least in the general context, right? Uh, anointing rings seems to give you bonuses to the towers that you can build in the league mechanic. So depending on how important the towers are, right? Um, for example, if it does take a chilling tower to allow you to chill or freeze enemies, then a build like Freezing Pulse is going to really want to have more freeze towers than most. And so, you know, getting bonuses to chilling towers is probably a good thing. I'll we'll have to see, like, how important the towers are to see how powerful it is. But everybody's going to make a ton of use of this. Oh, one of the big ones, yeah, Whispers of Doom, being able to apply an additional curse without having to route to this, it would be humongous for any build. It'd be pretty hard to, for me to fit into my builds because I hard cast my curses. So I don't know how, how interested I'd be in that. But most builds that, that apply curses through things like curse on hit rings, this is like money. Um, although it, it will probably literally be money because as they say somewhere here, like uh, they vary considerably in rarity, which means, you know, the very top end oil is going to be really expensive, especially, you know, once people know what oils turn into... Uh, notables like whispers of doom one of the nice improvements they made over something like synthesis though is that there's no mystery involved if you slot these oils in there it'll show you what it's going to allocate before you spend them so there's not um, going to be any uh wasted resources here you're just going to know what you have access to at any given time they did say i don't think it says on this page maybe it was in the ziggy d's video or something um that there are 12 or 13 new notables that only come through the system so we don't know what those are yet. We probably won't even find them out through the patch notes. Um, but it's very possible that one of those is really particularly good for our totem builds. We'll have to find that out after the league launches. But in general, I'm quite excited for this. This is a really cool idea that um, it gives you a neat way to think about improving character power. It seems a little more interesting than just the way synthesis items just sort of slapped more implicits on stuff. And it looks like they've also got... Um, there's a new unique set that comes from the Blighted stuff. I think it's a four-piece armor set. And each one of them... I don't think there's a bonus in particular for actually having the set together. But the unique aspect of them is that they can be anointed just like amulets. So that you can get an additional notable from every one of those armor pieces. Which sounds insane to me. Right? It's just going to depend on how viable it is to wear... You know, like the boots here... They have a really cool bonus of having increased cooldown recovery speed on your movement skills or your travel skills, which is awesome. But it also has movement speed is 150% of its base value, which sounds like a really cool bonus. And in one way it is, right? It's almost like getting a Chaos Roots effect where you can't be slowed. Your movement speed is fixed. But that's also a downside, right? Because being fixed at 150% of its base value is definitely lower than what you can reach if you're actually trying to build into movement speed right like quicksilvers wouldn't do anything i mean that would save you a flask slot but it also just means your actual top speed is going to be significantly lower than what you can get to if you're putting any investment into it so there's obviously going to be some big downsides and i imagine the other four armor pieces are going to follow that trend like there's no life and there's no resist on this thing it has no armor it's just evasion and es which is probably the least desired combination of stats for most builds and uh, the other armor pieces are probably going to follow suit. I'm still, you know, it'd be interesting to see if we can fit at least one of these into uh, into our build. But I don't think I would use these boots in either of my builds. I'll we'll have to see what the new ones are. This, this here, this aspect of the league is probably what I'm looking forward to even more than the actual league mechanic. They finally updated master missions to where, like, you don't have to run them as soon as they're on the map. Uh, they basically just stack up, right? And if you didn't want to run it on the map as they appeared, it sort of goes into this bank. And this is obviously like uh, the tier of map that you have to run. So you obviously would want to bank like red maps, you know. But what this means is that 
you no longer have to like, oh, Alva's here. I got to go fucking run Alva right now because I need to build my temple. And then once the temple is active, you had to run it right then. Because if you didn't, you wouldn't get any more Alva missions. So your temple would just sit there and rot and block you from running more temples later. Now, none of that's true. You could just stack up Sulfite. And if you just want to go delve and wait until the weekend, you can just skip Nico the whole time. You know, or you can st fill up your sulfite and then let these stack up. Go delve later. Go back. Run a bunch more. Stack up again. Go back. It's going to be totally like in your control what you're doing, which is awesome. It's one. It was one of my biggest frustrations with where the game was, where like maps were getting so busy. You know, it was like if Einhard was there, you didn't want to skip him. You didn't want to skip Alva ever. You never wanted to skip Nico. Nico wasn't really a big time waster, thankfully. But it was really Alva, I think, that drove me the most insane. Um, but now you can just do everything on your own time. Um, I don't, they don't say it here, but they, uh, they did say somewhere that they also buffed the Mastermind. Like, Mastermind and Delve are now, like, account-wide for the League. Uh, so your Betrayal board, for example, is the same for all your characters. The nice thing about that um, I already like Betrayal a lot. They also buffed the Mastermind fight so that you get a reward room for every uh, character on the entire board when you run the Mastermind instead of just from the four leaders, which is awesome. Because it was always kind of a question of like, do I really want to run the Mastermind and lose the safe houses I set up? But now it's like, you can get a huge reward for clearing her out. So it's going to be uh, something I do even more often. We've also got some changes. I'm not even going to go over these that much because I'm I'm personally not super interested in playing any of these. But they have a lot of revamps coming for uh, necromancers. This the whole necromancy skill type, right? They're making changes to all of the uh, minions. It doesn't sound like golems. It seems pretty specific to uh, like specters and you know raise undead and skeletal archers and stuff. They did introduce a new golem, but the new golem is actually meant for this kind of playstyle. It basically gets buffs from non-golem minions. So it's actually something you're supposed to run when you're not a golem answer. Um And then they also buffed like the poison. I guess I don't I don't really know a lot about poison builds in this game, but it sounds like this is gonna be mostly through like a couple new skills, but then also through the assassin ascendancy, which they're reworking. So I have a feeling most of this is going to be through the Assassin, but then there will be a couple. They have this new, what do they call this? Oh, this is a new movement skill, which is kind of neat. Uh, yeah, this one, which is sort of like a weird version of Spectral Throw, but instead of piercing, it chains, and it poisons stuff that it hits, basically. And then they also they are reworking the Mind Saboteur. Mines seem look like they are getting a lot of changes in terms of the actual gameplay style. Like, every mine you lay out reserves mana, which is a little odd. Um, and they also can no longer detonate at the same time. They detonate in sequence pretty rapidly, judging by the video, but they detonate in sequence as you laid them. And then some of them get bonuses for detonating in longer chains, I guess. It sounds pretty setup heavy to me, and it still sounds like a pretty boss killing kind of focused gameplay. Um, but it does sound like it'd probably be smoother to use for clearing than the current uh, mine situation. I'm not really sure though. I'm not. I like traps, but I never really liked mines, so I don't know if I'll play with this. I'll have to see. It'll definitely come way later after I get my fill of bashing this league with freezing pulse totems. And then there's just some some. You know, new, unique. I didn't see anything here that would be too interesting for totems. It seems like mostly, you know, based on the new archetypes. This was kind of strange, though. This new dagger, which gives plus three a level of all physical spell skill gems. Uh, this is global, so this actually improves the level of every physical spell gem you have on your entire character. Which sounds pretty, pretty crazy. Um, but since it does remove your elemental damage, it's going to be pretty, pretty niche in terms of what you can do with it. I was thinking, uh, I'll look at this more, I think, when the patch notes actually come out, but there's probably some kind of opportunity for a shockwave totem build to get, to utilize this item. Uh, and I'll, I'll think about that. 
I don't really have a third totem guy like on my plate, but it sounds like something that could be enabled by an item that powerful. You know, I think you could get up to something like a level 30, 32, or something shockwave totem if you really pushed it because of this. It sounds disgusting <laughs> uh, when I say it like that out loud. We'll see. Um, it's definitely not my priority though. At least they, they also did buff these uh, Legion the Scarabs. They added these to the game and they buff Vagan. He's going to be the one from a trail that drops these Scarabs. It's pretty cool. He's been basically entirely useless. I always talk shit about him. But I'll probably be adding him because you can still unlock a fifth map slot device through Legion. But Legions are going to be a lot more rare now since they're not the main league mechanic. Uh, so we're going to want access to a lot more like legion scarabs and stuff but yeah um this looks like a really really cool league to me um it looks a little bit more engaging than legion did i think it's gonna be more divisive for sure because legion's so straightforward that even if you were like me and you were kind of bored by how simple it was i think most people at least appreciated that it was something that didn't interfere that much it was just kind of like, like I said, it's it's more just more ma like monsters on the map to smash. Um, this looks a little bit more interesting, um, but some people definitely are not going to enjoy this. Any builds that really rely on a lot of um, a lot of micro, you know, like a lot of hotkeys and stuff, and a lot of focus game, like anybody playing one of those ice snow frostbolt builds, for example, I think would hate this because. Th Having to split your time to deal with these tower things is going to hurt certain builds a lot. Uh, and of course some people just aren't going to want to mess with all the little towers and shit. But I'm looking forward to it. Uh, as far as the, the build guides, I'm going to be releasing new updates for the guide a lot closer to launch. Uh... I'm sure I'll be able to update both builds. Oh, I did want to mention, so they mentioned on the very top of this page that two leagues were being added to the core game. The other one being Synthesis. Um, they're not actually adding the whole league back to the game, but they are adding the boss fights from Synthesis back through Zana. So if you've ever found an untainted paradise map, you can only access that map through Zana when she's, on a, when she's actually on a map. Um, when she offers that selection of maps to you, Untainted Paradise was basically, it's not even on the Atlas. It is um, completely unique to her. And so all the Synthesis boss maps are going to get added to her pool too, which means that for um, Holy Flame Totem, we should be able to have access to Circle of Anguish back instead of having to run Essence Worm. My gut feeling is that Circle of Anguish is going to be incredibly rare, right? And that's going to make it extremely expensive to get a Circle of Anguish that actually had buff effect for Herald of Ash on it. Especially one that had buff effect and like another good mod like fire damage. That's going to be tough. And it, it means that it's going to be so rare that it will be an incredibly expensive item, I think. Um... So it might be a little bit hard to justify putting that much currency into Holy Flame Totem. I don't know. Depends on how much you like Holy Flame Totem, I guess. I do like this build as a league starter a lot. But for that much currency, like, I don't know how I feel about it. It was actually kind of expensive, uh, even in Synthesis. I, I just can't imagine how much it's going to cost in this league. But at least it's there. So if you really like Holy Flame Totem, this build will go back to being much more powerful like it was in Synthesis if you do get lucky or have the currency to invest to pick up one or even two Circles of Anguish. You know, we get back to, uh, you know, well over three, four million Shaper DPS in this build with the power of those rings, which is nice. And it's also nice that we have access to that in a way that... Um, doesn't make us actually play the entire synthesis mechanic, which was not my favorite. But yeah, I am really looking forward to updating my guides. Uh, I'm going to be waiting probably until patch notes for both builds to make sure I have a good sense of what's going to be changing as far as new skill gems and seeing if freezing pulse gets nerfed or you know something else gets nerfed that affects the builds as they are right now. And then after the league starts, I'm going to be league starting with freezing pulse totems for sure. The league mechanic just looks too ideal for this this concept, and uh, I'll probably be releasing videos like once a day, 
um, as sort of a build diary for League starting with this build compared to Holy Flame Totem. Um, so as far as the channel is concerned, I will be back to being very active pretty soon here. And I'll be streaming full time again uh, once the League drops. So if you are looking forward to the build guide updates, keep an eye on the thread or subscribe to this channel and uh, turn the notifications on and you will get notified when I update. I probably won't do a full length guide in video form like I did the first time just because I don't think it'll be necessary. I can't imagine that either build is going to change so dramatically that I need to do the entire video guide over. But I will make video updates for both of them going over what changed and linking like the new um, the new path to building links and the new forum threads and stuff. So yeah, that is uh, what's going on. It looks like we've got just under 17 days until the league starts. I probably won't, I probably won't be streaming Path of Exile before then. Um, I can't think there's really much of anything left to do um, until the league starts. But keep an eye on the thread and keep an eye on the channel for updates as we get closer to launch if you are looking to play either one of my builds for your league starter. Anyway, thanks and I will see you guys later.